Hello, my name is David Wynn, and I am a technical marketing engineer with Cisco Server Switching and Virtualization Product Group. This video is part of a series that is intended to show some of the unique advantages made possible by Cisco Server offering called the Unified Computing System, or UCS for short. This video will show the viewer the details of VLAN organization and how customers can best use this feature. This video is broken down into two parts. The first part of this video will go over a few slides to provide a brief overview of this feature, what we're trying to solve, and how this feature works, followed by a real live demonstration of the feature. Before we dive into the feature, the UCS users will need to have an understanding about UCS organization and roles as the VLAN org feature builds off of it. If you are unfamiliar with it, I provide a link for your review. It is important to have VLAN policy because if one is not in place, it can lead to a scenario where all VLANs become available to all organizations, even though the organizations do not require all the VLANs, which is okay, but not the most optimal. Another possible scenario is that organization using the same VLANs, which is more of a concern for many reasons, such as it can have implications to application performance, or become a security concerns where you don't want an engineer or financing using or sharing public VLANs. The traditional method, while may not be the most elegant, is managing through by adding additional I.O. modules and or adapter cards and pinning the VLANs to the specific components. For added insurance, VLANs can be pruned at the network layer to ensure VLANs are contained. UCS have a concept of organizations and policies where each policies are restricted within an organization. This concept has been extended to VLANs call VLAN org aware, such that each organization can only have access to a set of VLANs. The organizations cannot go outside of those set of VLANs. Going back to our diagram where we have four organizations, the root administrator can create a level set of VLANs for each organization. In this case, 250 VLANs for each organization. One thing to note, while in my VLAN structure, the VLANs do not overlap between the organizations. It is possible to have VLANs overlap between orgs, but this is an unlikely scenario for the very reasons that had been described in the previous slides. So the configuration steps, uh, we basically broken down to two different types of uh, deployment scenario. The first one is uh, greenfield deployment. And basically, Greenfield is uh, meaning that you're just bringing up a new UCS system. And the steps that you need to do is basically plan for VLAN structure, enable org aware VLAN feature, create orgs, and configure the default VLAN permission. Default VLAN permission is basically a UCS best practice um, is to always create a VLAN permission in the root org. This will restrict access for all orgs to the list of VLANs that have permissions or group permissions configured. Then you want to enable VLAN org permission feature and verify the configuration. In a brownfield deployment, meaning that you already have an existing UCS that's up and running and you want to enable this feature, um, the steps are basically plan VLAN structure, configure a default VLAN permission, configure VLAN permission and group permission, verify configuration, and enable VLAN or permission feature. Next, let's go to our next um, part of the uh, video, which is our demo. And I have a UCS system here for us. And I already defined um, four seven organizations, Ad Dev, Finance, HR, and Web. I also have defined um, 21 VLANs, which I'm going to make available to these Ad Dev, or I'm going to slice it up to each of these organizations, all right? So the first 21. So the first thing that we want to do is have a default VLAN permission, which was going to be VLAN 1. And I'm going to sign it to root and click OK. I got this pop-up warning message. And basically, this is telling me is that I have yet to enable the uh, VLAN org um, feature under the global policy. Um, so it's just a warning message. And we're just going to ignore it for now. And you're going to see why or what's the significance of enabling it. <clears throat> now, to help simplify my um, management, I basically did VLAN groups. VLAN groups is basically where you can define a set of VLANs and 
be represented by a single group name. So here I have a group name called finance and I have VLANs 2 through 6 that's going to be part of this finance. HR is going to basically have uh, VLANs 7 through 11 and then web is going to basically have VLANs 12 through 16. Now um, what I want to do is you can define um, assign the VLAN organizations and that's for finance I put for finance and what this does is basically all the VLANs here will be part of the finance you can do this on a per VLAN basis on a per VLAN but you know it becomes a more of a <clears throat> management um, situation so um, where now I just do it under group and all those VLANs will inherit this all right so just to show you for to illustrate that you know if I go into under VLAN I can do this individually here okay <clears throat> next let's go ahead and create the last one which is app dev here and I want 17 18 19 20 and 21 click finish app dev make sure that it's part of it and click OK. Okay, so <clears throat> if we go down to our policy, let's go down to our sub organizations, let's go to app dev real quick. And if we click on org permissions and accessible VLANs, you notice that all the VLANs are still available. Um, why is that? If you remember a warning at the beginning, um, it told us that we have yet to enable it under the global policy work permissions. So let's go here, click save. Um, okay. Now, if we go back to App Dev, you notice now only VLANs default and 17 through 21 was only available to App Dev. Okay, so VLANs 1 through 16 is not visible so therefore I cannot configure anything under DAP devs or 16 1 through 16 is not available for anything under app dev organizations <clears throat> so um, one other thing I want to show you is what happens if you create a, another um, organization under a sub organization so let's say under finance I have accounting okay now under accounting, let's say I have a new set of VLANs, and let's say VLAN 999, assign it to accounting. Wonderful. So, what are you expecting under finance, right? Under finance, you only have VLANs 2 through 6, and you don't see anything under 999. So, let's go down and look at accounting now. Well, you notice that you have 226 and 999. One thing you have to keep in mind is in a nested or um, organizations where you have a child uh, sub-organization and a sub-organization is that the child um, organization will always inherit from the parent. Okay, in this case, the child is the accounting and the parent is finance. So therefore, he will inherit all the per, uh, policy that's uh, be defined in finance. Okay, so in this case, default through two through six will become available to the child, and the permission is not reversed in the such that the finance will not inherit the child. So this is one thing that you should be aware of when you create um, multiple sub organizations. In closing, you can see how this can be very useful by having a feature that does is VLAN or aware. This will help structure VLANs and at the same time ensure that VLANs are only being used by certain organizations and help you comply um, policy regulations. This ends this UCS Advantage video where we, can, where we show you how unique capabilities in the UCSCO UCS can lead to simplified deployment models with much faster service turnaround to meet the increasing demands of the business. Please go to www. Cisco.com.
forward slash go forward slash UCS for printed collateral, including a brochure that highlights the information shown in this video. Thank you.